Today we're going to be starting on the very last lesson of Module 10. This is going to be Lesson 6 where we're going to be talking about simulated chances. You can see the suggested pacing guide says that this is going to be a two-day lesson. There's only nine resources in it, so I don't know about that. We shall have to see where it takes us to today. It's pretty easy to roll a number cube once or twice. What if you had to roll the number cube 1,000 times? Would that take a long time? It absolutely would. In fact, that's not really something I would want to have to do and have to document all those answers as you go. When an experiment is difficult or time consuming to perform in real life, you could use a simulation to get results. But to simulate many trials of a probability experiment, a computer can be used to generate results quickly. In other cases, when studying real life situations, you can use number cubes, coins, or spinners in order to run these simulations. How can a random number generator help you to simulate rolling a number cube 1,000 times? Well, hopefully we're going to learn about that in today's lesson. Our inquiry question says, how could you use a random number generator to model the probability of an experiment? And they're going to let us use a web sketch pad to do this. The random number generators can be adjusted so the range of the numbers can accommodate any simulations. This sketch will randomly generate numbers 1 through 6 to simulate rolling a number cube. Select roll number cube ten um, to conduct a simulation of 10 rolls and when you do boom there they are. So there was a simulation of 10 rolls of the number cube and if you see we reset that every time we do it we're going to get different numbers and see how quickly those numbers come in a whole lot quicker than if we were to do it on our own. What if they want you to take and use a random number generator to simulate rolling two number cubes? Well, you'd only have to roll it one time for the first number cube, roll it a second time for the second number cube, boom, you're done. Easy math. Now we're going to let each trial represent two rolls to the number cube. So we're going to press roll the cubes and what's going to be the relative frequency of rolling a sum of seven in your results. Let's take a look here. We're going to roll it once and it actually they said that they had two different sets. So they rolled two cubes ten times. The relative frequency of rolling a seven, well it never happened. It was an impossible event and we could have known that with our theory. Oh I'm sorry, a sum of a seven. My bad. It wants a sum of seven. And a sum of seven, that is going to end up being, we've got one right here, this seven. And then we have hmm, two. And looks like two out of the ten times you ended up getting a sum of seven and rolling your number cubes. Let's keep going as we learn how to simulate simple events. Let's zoom in some for you here. A simulation is defined as a, an experiment that is designed to model one or more events. So you're not actually doing the event, you're simulating the event. The simulations often model events that would be too difficult or too time consuming or impractical in real life. Suppose a cereal company places a prize in one out of every three boxes of cereal. You can design a simulation that models whether or not a box of cereal you buy is going to contain a prize. The event consists of randomly selecting a cereal box to simulate the, the event. You can design an experiment that has the same probability of excess. In this case, the probability of excess is going to be one out of three because one out of every three boxes is going to contain a prize. Let's keep going. One way you could design this simulation is to design a spinner that has a probability of excess as an outcome is one out of three. So the blue would be your winner, the reds would be your failures, and then when you move through that you would spin and see how many times it happened. Another way you could design a simulation is to use a number cube because a number cube has six sides. You could rewrite the that as a probability of one third as the equivalent fraction with a denominator of 6. So in this simulation you could say um, define successes by rolling two of the six faces. So maybe you said that a 1 or a 2 represents a cereal box with a prize. Everything else you're going to lose. And what do we have here? So what is going to be not getting a prize? 3, 4, 5, and 6. 
you're not going to get a prize. So we use a six-sided number cube to simulate a three-option outcome where one and two are winners and four, five, and six are going to be losers. Check our answer and it checks. Now we're going to take and drag the icon to represent the related event to the model that can be used to correctly simulate the event. And we've got, let's zoom down some, a spinner with four equal sections or one toss of a coin. So here your favorite book, picking your favorite book out of four books randomly assigned, that's going to be that. Your favorite baseball team has three out of four chance of winning. Once again, that's going to be uh, out of a four section. Rain, 50% chance of rain. That's a toss of a coin there, heads or tails. A half chance of the girls basketball team wins their first game, heads or tails. And a certain color mar marble is randomly chosen from a bag containing four marbles. There you have your four outcomes. All of those are going to be correct. But what if we had to simulate compound events? As with simple events, you can design a simulation to simulate a compound event. Coins, number cubes, and spinners are often used to simulate events. Design a simulation you need to do each of the following. Define what outcome represents and determine its success or failure rate, and then define what each trial represents. Watch this animation and it's going to explain that in more detail for you. You are asked to use a simulation to estimate the probability that all three cubs in a litter of three tiger cubs will be females. Begin by designing the simulation. For each cub there are two possible outcomes, female or male. So choose a tool with two possible outcomes, such as tossing a coin. There are three cubs in the litter, so use three coins in each trial. Let heads represent a female cub and tails represent a male cub. Next, perform the simulation and record your data. The table shows the results of 100 trials of the simulation. Now use the data to find the experimental probability. The experimental probability is expressed as the ratio of the number of experimental successes to the number of experimental attempts. In this case, you want to estimate the probability of three female cubs. There were 14 experimental successes in the simulation. And the number of experimental attempts is equal to the number of trials. Finally, simplify the ratio. Based on the simulation, the estimated probability that all three tiger cubs will be female is 7 over 50, or 14%. Well, that looks pretty darn simple. I really think y'all can handle doing that. Let's find out. Continuing with that learned activity, it says there's many ways to simulate the, what a situation that involves probability. And it says select the topics and represent the, to learn about simulations that for probability events related to it. So, if we wanted to look at the weather, a 50% chance of rain, you could use a coin toss where you got heads and tails. You could use a spinner divided into an even number of sections where half of them say it's gonna rain, half of them say it's not gonna rain. And then we can take, and I guess we gotta go back home, but doing marbles, suppose you have a bag with equal number of red and blue marbles and green marbles. Select a simulation to determine the probability of randomly selecting a marble. Well, we could take the number cube and we could say that two of them represent one color, two of them represent the next color, and then two of them represent the color after that. Or we could take and do a spinner and say that one of divided into three equal sections and say that each one of those sections equals one of the colors. Going back to that number cube, I want to make sure you all understand. So one and two would mean you'd get a red, maybe. Three and four could represent blue. And four and five, that could represent green. So if you scored maybe a four, that means that four would be the mar color of marble that would have been picked on that trip. And then in football here, suppose that on average, a professional football player makes two out of three of his field goals. Once again, that's going to be very similar to the last one we did. We could take and say that um, 
we, the question is what is the probability he makes two goals in a row, row? Well, that would mean that he would have two out of six, or excuse me, four out of six chance. If he has a one out of three chance, I'm sorry, two out of three chance, that means he has a four out of six chance of getting two in a row. So we're going to select each trial that consists of that. You could also use a spinner where you have two sections that are good, one section that are missed, and then spin that two times to find out the odds that way. Example number one wants us to simulate a compound event. A local grocery store sells cereal in two packs for a special price. The probability a box containing a prize is one out of three. Design and simulate an event that represents the probability of randomly selecting a two pack that contains a box, a prize in both boxes. And then it says run that simulation ten times. What's the simulated probability of getting the prize in both boxes of cereal? So let's see what they do. They ended up taking a um, spinner where you've got two red and one blue section. In this one, you've got a one in three chance of getting a prize out of a box of cereal. So they took the one blue section is going to be your winner. The two red sections, those are going to represent a failure, otherwise known as not getting a prize. From here, we're going to keep moving. One trial consists of spinning the spinner um, twice. So let's move through the slides and see how we're going to do it. So we've got packages, box one and box two, and whether or not you're going to get two prizes. So when we took and spun it, the first time we spun, we spun once and we got a prize. We spun the second time, we did not get a prize. We continued doing it. We spun once, we got a prize. We did not get a prize. We spun a second time, we did get a prize. Again, we spun once, no prize. We spun a second time, no prize. And you continue through this process until you get to having your whole table filled out here. And you can see that what are the odds of getting a prize twice? There was one, two times out of 10 times. And this is going to be your experimental probability, two out of 10, also known as a one in five chance. So move back over here. How many times did you have a prize in both boxes? Twice. So the estimated probability of selecting a two pack that contains a prize in both boxes out of 10 is going to be two out of 10, also known as 0 0.2, also known as 20%. That's all there is to do in these. Now it's going to be your turn. Work extra example one on your own where there's a three and four chance of it snowing to having a enough to have a snow day on Thursday and a three out of four chance of snow day on Friday. A student wants to run a simulation to estimate the probability that there will be a snow day on both days. How can a student model a situation of a snow day on both days? Option A, each trial consists of tossing a coin once or twice. No, because we're dealing with a three out of four chance. So that's not going to happen because a coin is a one out of two chance. Um, and then B says each trial consists of spinning a spinner with four equal sizes twice. Label three of them with snow and label the remaining with no snow. A success rate of both landing on snow represents... A winning and a failure represents one or both days landing on no snow. That one right there, that is going to end up being your answer. Check it and it's a winner. Continue moving down. We're going to take in, um, the table shows the results of 10 trials of the compound event. An S represents a day where there is snow day. An N represents a day where there is no snow day. According to the simulation, what is the experimental probability of having snow days on both Thursday and Friday? Well, we had one, two, three, four days out of ten where they ended up getting a snow day on both. Four over ten is the same thing as saying a two out of five is a fraction. So there is my fraction. Four out of ten is also the same as four tenths or 0 0.4, which is the same thing as 40% chance of getting snow on both days. What did I miss here? One, two, three, four. Hmm. All right, my answer was right. The textbook is wrong on this. They're saying it's three out of 10 when clearly trial one, 
trial 6, trial 7, and trial 10 all gave you two snow days. On this one, the textbook is wrong. My answer was right. For example number two, we have a computer simulation that was designed to simulate rolling a number cube multiple times until all the positive even numbers were rolled. The relative frequency bar graph shows the number of rolls needed for the computer to roll all of the even numbers. What is the simulated probability that eight or fewer rolls were needed to obtain all the even numbers of the number cube? First, we need to find the sum of the relative frequencies that indicate either a 6, a 7, or 8 rolls was needed in order to obtain all of the even numbers. So they said the, for their formula, the probability of the event, the event being less than or equal to 8 rolls, is going to be the probability of getting it in 6 rolls plus the probability of getting it in 7 rolls plus the probability of getting it in 8 rolls. So scrolling down here, we can see next that the probability of a 6 was going to be 0 0.8. You can see that occurred here at 0 0.8. The probability of a 7 was going to be at 2.0. And you follow it up, it lines up with the frequency of, I'm mean, sorry, 0 0.20. And the probability of 8 was at a 0 0.10 on the frequency chart right there. It's going to be a 0 0.10. From there, all you have to do is add those up together, which gives you a 0.4 chance of scoring all your even numbers in 10 rolls, and that is also ended up, um, I'm sorry, the num number of rolls, and that also is going to end up being the same as saying a 40% chance. The relative frequency has the same value as the experimental probability, so the probability is that it takes eight or fewer rolls in order to obtain all of your even numbers on the number cube is going to be at 40%. Now you get one more problem to work on. This will be the last problem of this lesson. For extra example number two, Emily designs a computer simulation with 50 trials and uses the data to create a graph. The graph shows the relative frequency of the number of times a coin was tossed in order to land four time, heads four times in a row. Use a graph. What is the probability the coin will need to be tossed seven, eight, or nine times in order to land heads four times? Write your answer as a percent. Go ahead and stop the video and work that now. So I set up my two formulas, the probability of a 7 or 8 or a 9 is equal to the probability of a 7 plus the probability of an 8 plus the probability of a 9. So you can see the probability of a 7, that ended up being at a 0 0.14 plus the probability of an 8 right here ended up at being 0 0.16 plus the probability of a 9 right here ended up being 0 0.10. When we add all those together, we're going to get, let's see, 14 plus 16 is going to be 30, plus 10 is going to be 40, so it's going to be 0 0.40. And that, of course, is going to be the same thing as saying 40%. Oh, messed up my circle there. Come on, baby, delete that circle. Let's try that again. There's my 40%. Jump back over to the textbook, put in our 40%. And check, and the answer checks. That's going to be it for this lesson. Get busy working on your homework, and let me know if you have any questions in class tomorrow.